think you've called your last three projects, the, what is it, the self-harm trilogy? Is, yeah. is, 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 that, <laughs> is that how you described it? I'm, what, I mean, what are the pieces that you identify with? What's the sort of scab that you're picking in? Is it, in fact, cathartic to put these projects out there? So much of what motivates me as a writer is to um, sort of connect with people who feel unseen in a way. Mm -hmm. And for me, issues of addiction or feeling othered because you, you don't have the right body type, or in the case of Camille, like this sort of grab bag of disorders, you know, she's an alcoholic, she self harms and um, but all of these things to me feel like parts of myself that I always felt were super shameful and mm. the more I contribute to putting those things on screen and sort of not they're not normalizing them because nobody wants these things to be emulated but I think that you feel less uh, alone you know and certainly makes me feel less alone to write them and then have people say oh me too and there's so much of that with those last three projects um but it's i do feel like i've sort of excised it and now it's all like comedy and musicals it's hard to make serious drama face i'll be at the comedy round table next time i love it <laughs> sharp objects, one of the things about the story is the people who seem the most like the killers are, are the killers. Right. You know? <laughs> and we try, you know, when we took the book, um, one of the things I said to Gillian was, you know, I think we need to build the world out and offer some other viable suspects because the minute you meet these people in this creepy house, you're like, they seem like really creepy people in a creepy house. And I think we benefited from the fact that people just went, well, that seems kind of obvious. And of course, we tried to make them look in other directions, but yeah, the audience is so ready not to look at the thing that's right in front of them. Even when you're saying like, no, this is gonna be a story about this, you know, it's, um, mm, it's it, it is exhausting. <laughs> I used to think that my reputation was um, like being really nice. And now I'm like, oh, I think my reputation may be that every other show I do, I either quit or get fired. <laughs> so, and then the other, then the other show is like a nice show. So I'm like, there's probably like, I probably have like, like multiple, <laughs> like I don't have just one reputation that actually, because a lot of what you guys were just talking about, I was like, the biggest journey is learning how to stay true to the show that you're making, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that I've learned, which is that the number one showrunner job is, I know what the show is, and no matter what happens, that's my job to get up every day and remind everybody what what we're what what we're doing and why we were doing it in the first mm -hmm. place. And so, like where I used to think I had a reputation of being a really like pleasant person to work with, now I hope it's like, well, she makes the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, she fucking yeah. makes the show, and sometimes it's not pleasant, and sometimes she's super good to be around, but she huh. does make the show. And if if she doesn't think the show's gonna stay, like, you know, in certain shows, like, I've quit, because I'm like, that's not the show we were making. And I'm willing to do that, and as long as I stay true to that, you know, there's always seems to be another job. Like, it's mm -hmm. when I start worrying about, like, I was told on one of the first shows out of Buffy, like you were, and it was kind of a hot mess because I was trying to make everybody happy. Mm. And I was trying to be it. successful and I wanted to show everybody that I had a show in me after Buffy. Mm. And when it crashed and burned rather spectacularly, one of the executives said to me, um, wow, you know, you were so great to work with. You took every note, like maybe too great to work <laughs> with. Oh. And I was like, oh God, they don't pay me to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> they pay me to tell them what the show is. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam Esmel. I'm Marty Knoxon. Hi, I'm Stephen Canals. I'm Sarah Gamble. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching the Hollywood Reporter Roundtable. The Hollywood Reporter Roundtable. Roundtable. On YouTube. On YouTube.